scientifically accurate nail art lovers and welcome back to another episode of Nailing Science with me, astrophysicist Dr. Becky Smethurst. Me, molecular biologist Dr. Mikhail Livingston-Banks. And this week's special guest is biomedical engineer Johanna Hettinger. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. It's the first time I'm getting my nails done. Really? So, really? yeah. First time? First time ever. First time any, like, you've done them or anybody's done them for you? Anyone. Anyone? Okay. You're this in for a treat. Yes. Like, yeah. You're in for a treat. So we should say that ahead of time, we have already painted uh, Johanna's nails already. Um, so Michaela, would you like to run through your colour choice before we start? Uh, yes, I have gone with this wonderful one from Prism Polish, which is called Drogon. 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 Ooh, very Game of Thrones. Yes, I think so. Reference it's kind of it. like dragony. It's, it's appropriate <laughs> because today is like Game of Thrones Day when we're is filming. It? So oh, yeah, exactly. I've never watched it. Oh shh, <laughs> Michaela, don't say that. And I went with this beautiful red, which is an OPI red called Big Apple Red, which is very very nice. And um, I think we both went for our colours because we were trying to emulate blood. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> yeah. um, so, would you, Joanna, would you like to tell us a little bit about your research while this first coat dries and then everyone can understand why we're trying to emulate <laughs> blood on your nails? <laughs> okay, so what I work on are flu vaccines. Okay. So, normally when you get a flu shot, they kind of put a needle into your arm and it goes into the muscle yeah, it hurts. and it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a, build a vaccine that can actually just go into your skin so it won't hurt at all. But surely, so the, the needle at the minute does go into the skin, but this is like an, like the vaccine that they actually shot into you. Yeah, it goes Whoa. through your skin, through into skin. your muscle. Right, okay. And I'm trying to go to a system where you literally put something on your skin, you treat it for a while, mm -hmm. and then that's it. What, like a lotion or like Star Trek hypo spray? <laughs> or like a, nic like a nicotine patch yeah. kind of thing is what I'm imagining. Um, well, currently what it is, it's a liquid. So you put like a little cup on your skin, mm -hmm. and then you put a liquid which has the vaccine in it on it okay. and you expose that to ultrasound so the same thing you use to look at babies mm -hmm. and that will help it go into the top layer of your skin okay cool and that will be it and it won't hurt and that's, that's, that's yeah awesome. that's, kids are gonna love this <laughs> <laughs> he's got a pair of needles it's like tell me more <laughs> so i thought like when they injected it into your you're saying it goes into the muscle like i yeah. thought they found a vein and they injected it straight to your like bloodstream but is that so that's not the case. <laughs> that's not the case. So what actually happens is when you get injected, it goes into your muscle. And as blood goes through your body, it kind of leaves the vein, goes into your muscle and gives oxygen and everything mm -hmm. every cell needs. Yeah. And when that blood goes into like the actual tissue, it also brings along immune cells. And those immune cells kind of look around. And when you get vaccinated, they find the things that have been injected. They go, oh, this is weird. Mm -hmm. And then when they go back to the bloodstream, they bring that along. Yeah. And then you've got some immune organs, which are like in your throat. That's why you get swollen in the throat. Oh, like or it's lymph like, nodes, right? Yeah, lymph nodes. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> My mom's always like, it will. <laughs> yeah. But they're also like under your armpits yeah. and in your thighs. And it goes there. And there are a lot of immune cells there. And once it reaches that, it shows it off. And it's like, I found this. Mm -hmm. And then the lymph node cells will go, oh, that's bad. Okay. And then they will mount right. an immune response. So what's the ultrasound doing in all of this? Yeah, is that just like you're not just wanting to skin. look at the, you're not wanting to look at what's under the skin, which is usually what ultrasounds is yes. used for, right? So. so ultrasound is like sound waves. Yeah. So they have a pressure. So if you, you know, if you have speakers, you can feel like the mm. pressure coming off the base. Yeah. Spent a lot of time standing in front of speaker <laughs> yeah. stacks. Yeah. yeah, definitely. You just, like, so you can use it. that in a much smaller scale to actually push things through the skin. And my lab specializes in bubbles. Uh, that's <laughs> all. Awesome. Wait, bubbles. Yes, bubbles. So bubbles are really cool because if you put them in a sound field, they start oscillating. So they start going, yeah. become, become small and big. Yep. Um, and you can actually use that um, to kind of make micro pores in your skin. Micro pores. Yeah. So sort of little tunnels through that hard layer okay. and then the actual vaccine can go through that hard layer to the skin that's underneath it. So the vaccine's where... in the bubble? No, it's with the bubbles. So the bubbles make the little holes mm -hmm. and then the vaccine can kind of go with the flow. Okay, so bubbles first, vaccine second, second kind yeah. of thing. Right, okay, so bubbles are like the advanced yeah, party. Yeah, yeah, like clearing the way. Okay, cool. Right, I, I got it, it, I got it, I got it, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Does that, make, that sounds like you've been like, hmm, bubbles. <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> so I'm going to try out a thing that I've seen done and I've not really done myself okay. which is where you use acrylic paint rather than nail varnish oh, okay. and you 
paint it on and then you sort of take it off with water again but it leaves like a ring like mm-hmm. a water stain <laughs> but it kind of look, like if you add a bit of color to it it looks like a bubble okay but you do it on like a matte background so that then you can put mm-hmm. like clear stuff on the top and it kind of yeah. stands out from the background yeah that's cool we yeah. could work together oh yeah oh. <laughs> so i could do one side of the skin you could, and you do, could do the, the skin other. side and i could do like the the bubbles and the ultrasound it makes it less Wait, competitive. Would I be under skin and over skin? <laughs> You'd be like the top of the skin. Okay, and then so the skin, under... skin is here, yeah. I kind of think. Yeah. All right. Normally when you get a shot, you get injected with like a piece of the virus. Mm-hmm. But that's really hard to make. So yeah, actually... like, a, like a dead virus, right? Yeah. So like with smallpox and stuff, they took like yeah, the... dead smallpox. If yes. you actually give people smallpox, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, but they actually have to make that with chicken eggs. Ch- Wait, sorry, what? Chicken eggs? Chicken egg. An egg. Uh-huh. And then they put the virus in there. Then in the it replicates in the egg. And okay, then so in, in the yolk? In Yeah, the yolk. Okay. So it uses the nutrients in the egg white. Okay. But not the... Is there a like a chicken embryo? Yes, yes there's okay. actually an embryo. Oh, okay. So it is grown right. in a chicken embryo. And what they then do is they grow that up for a few days and then they have to take all the virus, they have to break all the eggs, take the virus out, clean that up, and that takes months. So, for instance, I work on flu. Okay. And you get flu around like September, October, they start telling you you should get your shots. shots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the World Health Organization, Mm -hmm. they tell in in January or February, they start telling the flu manufacturer, the flu vaccine manufacturers, what they need to produce, and that's when they start. But how do they know that far ahead of time? Like, what's going to be, like... They kind of look what's in the air, what they can see low levels of, and then they assume that's going to expand. But you know how they sometimes say, like, trivalent no. flu shots? No. Okay, so normally when you get a flu shot, they kind of hedge their bets, and they put three different types in, Okay. and then hope that one of them will be... The one that becomes the right. big flu this the year. The one that everybody gets. Oh, yeah. that cold that's going around that everybody's got. Kind yeah. Of thing. Right, okay, yeah. Because it takes so long, if something pops up that we didn't expect, like the swine flu in 2009, oh, remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they did manage to make a vaccine for it, but it came after, like, most people had already gotten sick. Right. So it just showed up too late. Mm-hmm. So what, Because it took them, like, six months to make the vaccine, I guess. Yeah, so it came, like, in Jan. Right, okay. <laughs> so that was a bit, like, outdated. <laughs> what you can do is give, like, DNA to your cells, and they will make the protein that is specific to a type of flu themselves. Mm-hmm. And then your immune cells will find that protein that your cells made themselves and be like, oh, this is bad, and make an immune response. But we're very good at changing DNA and making a lot of DNA very quickly. So you could yeah, speed you can, like, up that production. Spit in a tube and like send off stuff now, like, and they're like make very. It, oh, right? you mean wait? Hang on. So this isn't just like analyzing DNA. This no, is this full is full on making. Yeah. The eight million odd whatever connections it is in DNA. But it would be a lot shorter because yeah. it just okay. needs to it's code. the Sorry. one. <laughs> yeah, it's the one protein of flu. <laughs> <It's> so exciting. <laughs> so if you have a virus, it looks like a little box. Okay. And on the outside of the box, there sort of flags that change every season. Okay. And that's why your immune system keeps thinking it's something new. Right. While the inside is completely the same. Yeah, that's why we keep calling it flu, right? Because yeah. it's the same base yeah. box, if you want to call it. Yeah, okay, cool. But the flags keep changing, so your immune system has to learn every year again, oh, this is the flag. Right. So if we just give your body Viruses. the flags, you can't get ill, but mm-hmm. your body does learn to recognize the flags. Right, okay. So I give the DNA for the flag, and that goes into your skin. And some of your skin cells will make the actual flag. Give that to your immune system. Okay. And your immune system will then take it to your lymph nodes. But then how does that then... Because you haven't given anything to do with the box. You've just given it the flag. So how yeah. does then your like immune system know that that flag goes with like the flu box rather than like the measles box? I don't know. You know do you know what I mean? Like, yes. So for your immune system, that doesn't matter. As soon as it sees the flag it'll be like oh this is something bad i'm gonna take this down yeah because like your immune system cells they don't have eyes they don't look at the whole thing the way they detect it is just on the basis of like one particular different thing Mm -hmm. and they've said this protein is different from the proteins that should be in my in me Mm -hmm. i guess yeah so if it goes in through the skin and then the immune cells in your skin make the flags we actually don't know which cells make the flags. Okay. So it could be your immune okay. cells. It could be your skin cells. So that's part of what I'm doing, working on now. Right. Okay. Trying to figure out 
how it works. Okay. So now I need to do bubbles what are trying to push their way through the skin. Yeah, pores. Poor expanding bubbles. <laughs> right. Can people ever... This is a really off-topic thing, but the whole pores expanding because of bubbles thing. Mm-hmm. Would that ever be used for, like, in facials or anything to, like, sort of clear out pores? Um, ultrasound and bubbles. <laughs> so the bubbles not yet, but the ultrasound is, like, used to clean your skin. Oh, yeah, you can get ultrasound facials. Yeah, so you? people yeah. do do that. Okay, so, so it's a similar process. Yeah, so the, the bubbles I'm using were actually invented by my lab. It's now a spin-out company. Cool. Okay. Um, but they have all kinds of uses. They even use it, like, in cancer therapy. So if they do in cancer therapy, they put the bubbles in your bloodstream mm-hmm. and then they shine, uh, put ultrasound um, where the tumor is Okay. and then they start pushing their way into the tumor so drugs can go further into oh, your tumor. cool. Okay. So does that help avoid um, like your hair falling out, for example, because cells that aren't cancer are getting killed by the chemotherapy? Yeah. Uh, that's actually targeted drug delivery, yeah. Wow. But then yeah, they have they to actually it. put the drug inside Mm-hmm. the bubbles so what i'm now trying to do because i'm a trained biologist i'm trying to figure out why it works mm-hmm. so looking does it go into immune cells does it go into skin cells right um which are the cells that where actually... are they where are <laughs> yeah. things? so you're going on a bit of a treasure hunt then trying yeah to... i'm going on a very expensive <laughs> treasure hunt <laughs> okay, yes so you make a really short strand of dna yes which encodes the flag yes on the outside of the virus yes and you put that into the skin Yes. And then is it like is it is it adapted into your DNA? Like is it replicated by your cells into that no. DNA? Or so, this is the bit that I'm confused about, like so what actually happens there. If you're in a cell, there are a few parts. So you've got the nucleus, which mm-hmm. is like the core, which has all your DNA in it. Mm-hmm. And my DNA kind of rocks up, uses the same system. Your, your DNA. <laughs> just <kind of laughs> the flag DNA. The flag DNA. Yes. <laughs> We're not just injecting your DNA into everybody. <laughs> So the DNA for the flag kind of comes in there. It gets turned into like this messenger RNA. So that's sort of the intermediate until it comes. What's RNA? Sorry. RNA. So we've got DNA, which is the double stranded Mm -hmm. helix. uh, Helix. Yeah. And you can. So if you know the left side, you always know the right side Mm -hmm. because they always bind in a pair. Okay. And what RNA does, it makes like a local copy of it. Your DNA enco- encodes proteins and then a bit of it is copied into mRNA and that's the message. Mm-hmm. And then the message goes out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and gets made into a protein and then it's the protein that does stuff. <laughs> so you've got the DNA that goes into your cell, into mm-hmm. the nucleus. That gets uh, that piece gets copied into like a message. Mm-hmm. That message then leaves the nucleus and goes into sort of the machinery that makes protein Mm -hmm. and that machine that makes the little flags yeah those flags get sort of exposed on the outside of the cell those flags kind of get put like oh i'm suddenly making these flags why am i doing this yeah and then immune cells go on huh you're making flags that's kind of bad yeah Kind so of after those messages have come out and been yeah, like made a made protein. protein, make a flag protein, yeah. make a flag protein, and the immune cells are like, what the, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you making all these flag proteins? Okay. Yeah, it kind of picks right. that up. That goes to the lymph nodes. Mm-hmm. And they go like, oh, this is not ours. And yeah. then they start mounting an immune response. So those, okay. you've got an immune response. You've got antibodies you might have heard of. So mm-hmm. those are sure. sort of things that stick on the outside. Mm-hmm. And then you've got other cells that kind of eat everything that's covered in antibodies okay. I'm like, oh this is covered in antibodies i'm gonna eat this up mm-hmm. break it down and get rid of it get rid of it throw okay. it out by the waste system right but these flags don't make you ill though no nope, because so they're they... just flags they're not nothing of the bad right. stuff inside the box right so it's not like you're giving it like a dead thing like they do with normal vaccines yeah it's that you're just giving it the flag that's going to be so there's issue. nothing in there that could possibly make you ill you're literally just making little flags right okay so anybody that is against vaccines for stupid reasons thinking that you're injecting <laughs> kids with like viruses even though they're dead like ha- should have no issue with this because literally there's, there's nothing there's nothing there's no actual virus going into your system no at all the system i have now i think there are literally three things in there i think it's a salt solution bubbles and the dna and that's that's everything. really cool if you would have a little label on it contains <laughs> all contains. natural <laughs> yeah organic <laughs> bubbles dna yeah and really some cool. salts yeah it's really cool so how far away from this if like is it on so like animal trials, have we done human trials, or is it complete theory at the minute? Um, so the 
person who worked on this before me, who made like the ultrasound setup, mm -hmm. um, she got it as far as that she put it on a mouse. Okay. And the mouse had made antibodies. So he didn't get the flu. They didn't give him flu. They just saw if he made antibodies okay. after being exposed to the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And it did. And it was actually really cool because remember how I said that your skin has much more immune cells than like your muscle where mm -hmm. now you get vac uh, vaccinated. So she was able to show that even though she only gave like one thousandth of the amount of DNA compared to if you would give a shot, mm -hmm. she actually only got 20 fold less immune response compared to putting it directly into oh, wow. a muscle. Okay. Um, so that should scared. scale though, shouldn't it? Yep. So the theory I'm working with on my, uh, doctor my phd thesis is that if i just improve it a little bit like make it slightly better cells express it a bit better mm -hmm. get the parameters slight so how i deliver the ultrasound or the setup a bit better we right. could already be at the point where it would fully immunize that's really cool so i guess that would still be a mouse trial is going to be part of your phd do you think then or will it just be um at the end, but the right end. now I'm just trying yeah. to figure out why it works. So I just take right. a piece of skin, <laughs> expose that to ultrasound, and then look, does cool. did it go to immune cells? So I just shave my skin and we expose that, and then you look like, uh, did it go to the immune cells? Mm -hmm. Does it go to normal skin cells? And that's kind of what I'm doing now, yeah. figuring out why it works. So she was able to show that it works, but we don't know why. Cool. And if I know to what kind of cells it goes i can make it mm -hmm. completely friendly to that cell so yeah so what i'm trying to do now is convince it to make as many flags as possible when there's nothing else bad with yeah. it because if you're if a virus tells you to make a lot of something that'd be pretty bad yeah basically <laughs> everything yeah that's currently vaccinated yeah could be done in this method yeah and it's a big advantage because we can make it a lot faster and normally you have to get vaccinations really like the vaccines have to be cold mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is really hard if you're going to like Africa. Yeah. And you have to get a truck. And surely it's much cheaper as well to do it this way. Yes. Also because you don't have to clean it up from an egg. Mm. Yeah. Also, <laughs> you don't right, have to so clean my, it up. My first question when you mentioned chicken eggs and stuff, like, does this mean that like technically vegans should not get vaccine? No, I'm saying, they... I'm, I'm not saying vegans don't get vaccines. <laughs> I'm just saying like, would vegans have an issue with the way that vaccines are produced? They could. So there's a move away from it because mm -hmm. some people who have an egg allergy, they can't get oh, vaccinated. Yeah. There's like two and a half percent of the people apparently yeah. have an egg allergy and especially kids. Yeah. So they have to wait for the egg allergy to either become less yeah. before they can get their shots. Just be ready with an EpiPen. But this is the point of herd immunity, right? Yeah. Is that those people who can't get yeah. vaccines, vaccines are protected by those who do. Oh, yes. okay. I've never really thought about that. Yeah. But that's why everyone who can should, should yeah. get vaccinated. Yeah, to protect everybody else. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So are you not cool with needles yourself? Is that kind of what drew you to... Yeah, I don't like getting my shots. I've got all of them. Like... Yeah, yeah. Responsible thing to do. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I do feel like I want to... If I have to choose between 10 minutes of being a bit like, oh, I'm not very comfortable or getting the measles. Yeah. I'll choose. <laughs> you know what I'm choose. <laughs> I'll choose that every time. Yeah. I think it's a really hopeful platform and it's pain free. You can adapt it. You can produce it much quicker if we actually get an epidemic of some sort. Mm. Cause you could use for like Ebola. Cause that came up so quickly. Yeah. We just didn't have time to make a vaccine. Mm. But if it's DNA, we can do this so much quicker. How quick though? I used to be in the lab making different types of DNA and like in a week. Okay. And then I it's just transport and everything, I guess. Well, then you scale it up so that takes about two weeks. Okay. And compare that to the six, six months. months. Yeah, yeah. That's a huge advantage. But there's like the chemical synthesis way of making yeah. DNA. And then there's the sticking a bit of DNA into like a bacteria and then growing up a ton of bacteria. But yeah. are you talking about the chemical, chemical. synthesis? Yeah. So there's a company that specializes. And then, but presumably they can give you that dry like a little pellet in the bottom, bottom of a tube. Mm -hmm. So like it's, it's really powder. stable, a powder, yeah, it's super stable. Oh, so you okay. can send it in the post. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's not dangerous to send in the post either because it's presumably no. not, you know, like dead <laughs> virus that they're sending in the post either. No, and just... they, they do this all already, don't they? Because I mean, I used to get my uh, little short bits of DNA delivered to the lab via the post. Yeah. <laughs> you just so, like get it on Amazon being like, DNA please. More or less. It's like, literally, yeah. you go online on, what is it? You could um, <laughs> Two oh, days. I don't even remember. I think I use so IDT. But yeah, you go there a week later, 
get an DNA envelope arrives. <laughs> full of DNA. Yeah. That'd be really annoying if you forgot what you'd ordered and you opened this envelope. <laughs> like, what did I order again? I'm like, pull it upside down and just DNA fell all over the place. I presume that's the life of a biologist. <laughs> they <laughs> give you like the option to give it a name that you can remember. Oh, okay. So I think Rather that's... than a string of ATGs and yeah. Things. So you have to like have this amazing bookkeeping system. Right. Spreadsheets. 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 Love a spreadsheet. I love the fact that like the evolution came up with the most incredible way of storing information in terms of an encoded <laughs> protein and all this kind of stuff and then we're like yes but we're going to use spreadsheets to keep on top yeah. of it yeah it's perfect um, okay. so i'm on my last nail and i've got to figure out what a lymph node looks like and so far i'm, I'm doing a white blob <laughs> uh, i had someone once trying to explain to me so mm-hmm. someone in my lab works on cancer and he was trying to explain to me how he gets lymph nodes okay and he said they catch the light slightly differently and that was the only description he had for me for finding them so i did a black hole picture it. nails. it's Amazing. so cool there you go yeah oh, you know what you put a pupil in the middle of it that becomes sour very easily <laughs> wow. as well very versatile nail art but anyway dna oh. is super cool yeah. Is, yeah and you can get it in the post i think was what we were saying. yeah well, actually we can make link it to the whole black hole because we? what they were telling me in the lab because last week we had a lab meeting mm-hmm. and we were all talking about this and a professor came and says what is the correlation or what's the same in bubbles and in that image of the black hole? And she was saying the light you see is compressed gas. So if you compress it, you get the light. Yeah. And bubbles, if you put them in a sound field and you oscillate them, they actually start glowing. That's really ah, cool. They you did. should totally Google like sono it's called sono luminescence sono luminescence like sono and luminescence. sound and yeah, then yeah. luminescence. You get these amazing clips of people literally Someone showed me mm. that one of the first experiments are like in a beer glass. Yeah, so <laughs> when you talked about bubbles expanding and contracting before mm-hmm. because of the ultrasound, um, it's the same process that happens. Have you ever um, beer tapped somebody? So if they're holding a bottle of mm-hmm. beer and you oh, take your bottle of beer yeah. and you like smack yours on top of theirs, yes. you basically cause that massive big sort of like volcano explosion of bubbles, yeah. right? And that's because when you tap your bottle on, you send this sort of shockwave through the liquid in the bottle mm-hmm. that bounces off bottom mm-hmm. and then bounces off the top of the liquid as well. And it yeah. sets up this standing wave that constantly just like pings back and forth <laughs> through the liquid. And as it goes past it, it compresses Versus and expands it. the bubbles. Yeah. And then they break off into like these collection of like tiny, Thing tiny bubbles. bubbles. And then they break off into tiny, <laughs> tiny bubbles and you just end up with four bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking about that before when you were talking Whoa. about yeah. That might take some time to dry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess but the yeah, bubbles but... you're dealing with must be super, super tiny though if they're getting through the skin, right? Can yes, a bit bigger there. But mine are very, very tiny, as in you can't see them. Oh. So the only way we can actually see them is because we're putting sound on them. Yeah, they start reflecting that sound. It's really cool. Um, and because they start oscillating, they kind of make sound. So if you move things, they make sound. Yeah, and we can hear that with some. Mm-hmm. equipment and sometimes you can see my professor like next to the setup he's like mm-hmm. no I hear it <laughs> <laughs> he knows exactly what he's listening for and mm-hmm. apparently it sounds like a bit of you know same soft sound if you're playing with a crisp bag oh okay like that a, kind of sounds very kind softly of... yeah yeah I have to do some ultrasound sound waves and possibly some DNA as well because if there's going to be DNA mixed in, I've, I realize I've not left. Yeah, what was it? What water, DNA, okay. bubble. Yeah, that's it. So that's you it. need to do so DNA, DNA in a bubble. <laughs> but it's near not in the bubble. It's, it's near, near the bubble. bubble. Can okay. I just put like a bit of DNA on this nail and then... Call it quits. Call it quits yeah. <laughs> there was a question I was going to ask you. Is You know when you said before, like, um, when you test this with mice and you put the solution on their skin and, yeah. you know, do this whole process... And you said you could tell that they'd um, produce more antibodies. Like, how yeah. do you detect that they've produced the antibodies? So what you do is you take a, a little bit of blood mm-hmm. from the mice, and then you can actually measure how much antibodies that are in there. So how would you measure that? Like, is that you um, mix it with a different solution or something? So, or? Um, like, so is it, you, like, mix it with some sort of, like, pH indicator, and it <laughs> turns blue if there's antibodies there? So I don't know, like... What you do is you've got your antibody and every antibody has the little bit that changes that yeah. binds to the flag you've got a constant bit mm-hmm. and this is what your immune cells recognize so your immune cells say oh i see a lot of these constant bits i'm going to eat this and what you can do is you can bind something to that constant bit that has like a fluorophore or something shiny on it yeah and can use that to see it so if something bound 
you're gonna it's slightly... actually another antibody yeah it's... that itself then has a shiny thing on it so okay. you're, you're, you're... you recognize the constant bit yeah so you've got antibodies against antibodies <laughs> too many antibodies <laughs> i thought we were bad in physics it was like anti-matter dark matter so okay, well, like, you know, antibodies and antibodies oh that's what they should call it rather than primary and secondary <laughs> antibodies just anti anti antibodies well you could have like the the dark antibody yeah and then the antibody yeah <laughs> it's like english wasn't made for this <laughs> I know. Really different well i mean science i think what puts a lot of people off science often is the language rather mm. than the ideas yeah. because obviously we can represent <laughs> the ideas relatively easily i mean rather beautifully if i do say so myself see you could make a hyperspray Come on, please make, you know, in Star Trek, the way that no. they do the, tsh, it just does that rather than a needle. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, tsh, like that. Sorry, what's it like? <laughs> <laughs> I was imagining more like, like makeup setting spray. Yeah. <laughs> you just, just, just or like, spray. you know, when you go into like a tanning booth like and they like spray you with the tan. Yeah. Like, you just step in, you're like, yeah, give me everything. And they're just there like, all of the food bags. Permanent! <laughs> So I've told the first part of the story of this science, the science story. So we have here some sound waves, as you can see here. Ultrasound. Uh, oh yeah, ultrasound waves. It obviously looks like ultrasound. And then here we have the collection of stuff, what needs to go into the skin. So we've got the DNA, which is going to be carried along with the bubbles. These are all bubbles. Uh, and yeah, the ultrasound oscillates the bubbles and makes them push through the skin and they bring the DNA with them. And then... Yeah, we get into the skin. <laughs> so this really ugly thumbnail is skin. <laughs> um, the pores are little pink dots and they each have... Hang on, let's just go over this side because it's over there. Bring it back a bit. There we go. So this is a really ugly skin thumbnail. And um, it has little pink pores, each of which has a little black hair growing out of it. <laughs> and the pores are what the bubbles on this hand are going to uh, expand and contract and open out the pores so that the DNA and stuff can get through the mm -hmm. skin. Uh, when it gets through the skin, it's because we're fighting flu. And this is a little flu box with a flu flag on it. Mm -hmm. But really the DNA just carries the flu flag bit mm -hmm. and not the box bit yeah. of the flu virus, which means there's no actual virus that's put into the skin by this like method of DNA transport with the bubbles. So then it'll get taken to a cell and the cell will look at the little flag DNA and will reproduce the proteins that um, will then get carried off through the blood. This is the blood vessels here. Look, there's lots of veins to the lymph nodes where there will be immune cells, which will then be like, oh, what's all these flag proteins? Got to get rid of these. <laughs> and then it'll know how to deal with it if we ever get the flu with that flag and so we'll be able to get rid of them i think it's like fairly scientifically accurate it's not to scale like <laughs> <laughs> the bubbles are a, a fair amount bigger than the dna will be and and the ultrasound, <laughs> the way ultrasound. Will be. <laughs> but i think the three parts that are there are definitely there i would definitely give it like four out of five okay and then it's out of five for like how pretty it looks like lookability like how many times are you gonna be like oh, lit today look at your bubbles uh, oh uh, i'm absolutely in love with these bubbles <laughs> <laughs> so i give that five out of five okay. they're absolutely stunning just look at I them i know they're so shiny and they're colorful so... i think we've got all the things but there are a few like bits and bobs that There's aren't a few artistic licenses <laughs> yes <in. laughs> so i think we went sometimes a bit figuratively with like the flag mm -hmm. that's very flu flag. yeah flu flag. i just like the word flu flag <laughs> I think I would give this about three out of five for scientific accuracy. But. I, I, could, I agree with that, to be fair. The only reason I like Flu Flag is because I think it reminds me of, like, Whoville in The Grinch, <laughs> when they're like, Flu Flag, Florence, Flu Flag, Florence, welcome, welcome. That, that song, <laughs> just Flu Flag, is not what I'm going to be singing at Christmas. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and then, what about lookability? Like, how many times are you going to be like, oh, they're so cutely gross. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got like like this half. I really like. I like okay. the veins and actually mm. really loving this one. Yeah, this one's really good. Thank you. I'm gonna Thanks. give it like three out of five for the half that like the three that are really successful okay. and the. I can deal with six out of ten. That's a solid two one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that means Michaela, you have won this week. 
Yes. Congratulations. Because yes. it was one all. It so was one all, now it's two, two on to you. Oh. Yeah. I know. Yes. So. <laughs> but that is judges' picks. So let us know in the comments <laughs> if you were particularly attached to the flu flag and the <laughs> cute little immune cell that I drew or the disgustingly gross skin but I really honestly think that Michaela you're gonna win this one this week because those bubbles are amazing so we hope that you enjoyed this week's episode of Nailing Science I'll link down below to uh, Johanna's social media profiles if you'd like to follow her sort of research journey through her thesis further but until next time we will see you all later bye, bye. <laughs> this is like you were like we had a thing on space we had some of the maths and Michaela's now like well we're doing something on DNA now <laughs> Yeah. So where does the skin come from? Again, is that animal yeah, skin? Yeah, that's mouse. Mouse skin. Okay. Has it been shaved? Yes. I don't know why that's important, but I felt like I should ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my sister's texted me as well. Hi, Megs. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for our animation. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's telling me something about Taylor Swift. That could have it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine me like wandering down the halls like someone's office? <laughs> Being like, excuse me, can you open my nail polish bottle? Just pause your like super, super amazing important. physics simulation of the universe for me and uh, just open this nail polish bottle. <laughs>